at uh, the celebrations. Today is um, the feast of Pentecost, the birthday of the church. The church was born uh, in that moment of fear, chaos, and vulnerability. And yet, it's the Holy Spirit promised by the risen Lord who transformed those fearful early disciples into um, courageous, leveling force for humanity. And so, this is a fitting metaphor for the church today as we endeavor to be that leveling force for humanity, for the, for the world, on account of the risen Lord and the Holy Spirit, the promised gift of the one who is always with us till the end of time. So brothers and sisters, let us now acknowledge our failures and sins. Let us ask the Lord for pardon and strength. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, blessed be ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. May the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, the Holy Apostles, Peter and Paul, and all the saints assist you with their merits and prayers. And may help you persevere in fruitful penance, good example, and sincere charity, and lead you to life everlasting.
mystery of today's great feast, sanctify your whole church in every person and nation. Pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth, and with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of believers. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Pentecost Day came around, the apostles had all met in one room when suddenly they heard what sounded like a powerful wind from heaven, the noise of which filled the entire house in which they were sitting. And something appeared to them that seemed like tongues of fire. These separated and came to rest on the head of each of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak foreign languages as the Spirit gave them the gift of speech. Now there were devout men living in Jerusalem from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, they all assembled, each one bewildered to hear these men speaking his own language. They were amazed and astonished. Surely, they said, all these men speaking are Galileans, how does it happen that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, people from Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya round Cyrene, as well as visitors from Rome, Jews and proselytes alike, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them preaching in our own language about the marvels of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. No one can say Jesus is Lord unless he is under the influence of the Holy Spirit. There is a variety of gifts, but always the same Spirit. There are all sorts of service to be done, but always to the same Lord. Working in all sorts of different ways in different people, it is the same God who is working in all of them. The particular way in which the Spirit is given to each person is for a good purpose. Just as a human body, though it is made up of many parts, is a single unit because of all these parts. Though many parts make one body, so it is with Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptized. Jews as well as Greeks, slaves as well as citizens, and one spirit was given all for us to drink. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O In the evening of that same day, the first day of the week, the doors were closed in the room where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them. He said to them, Peace be with you, and showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. And he said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I am sending you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Those whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. For those whose sins you retain, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Dear brothers and sisters, we live in a world where fear seems to stifle love. In fact, if perfect love casts out fear, as we Christians are called to do, the opposite seems to prevail. It is perfect fear that casts out love. It is the fear of losing one's privilege, status, and power that gives rise to systemic inequality, entrenched poverty, and even brutality. We can see the manifestations of this fear in the dramatic events that are unfolding in America. As the coronavirus death toll passes a 100,000 milestone, the country has erupted yet again with violent protests. The pandemic has exacerbated the country's existing racial tensions, and now the death of another African-American is the latest example of police brutality that sparked riots across the country. It is an indictment of, on a society that has failed to hear as Martha uh, Luther King said that the promises of freedom and justice have not been met. Here in Australia, we should do well to hear the cry for freedom and justice from our marginalized and especially our indigenous brothers and sisters. While we celebrate the rich history of stewardship of the land and culture of our first peoples, we cannot remove, or rather we cannot remain unmoved by the plight of their inequality. How can we be indifferent to the institutional failure that dehumanizes the victims 
and makes us less than ourselves? How can we enjoy one of the best living standards in the world while some of our fellow citizens are condemned to a cycle of hopelessness through deep systemic injustice? And so as we celebrate Reconciliation Week this week, we must move with resolve to a more dignified and a more just future. The Feast of Pentecost inspires us to do this. The first Christian community was, above all, a community that endeavored to move from fear to perfect love. We are told that after the crucifixion, the disciples gathered in the state of fear and disarray. There was pressure from outside. They were marginalized and indeed persecuted by many hostile forces. There was also a deep sense of failure and betrayal from within. The disciples were confronted with their own misguided ambitions and weaknesses. Yet it was into this very moment of vulnerability that the Holy Spirit came and transformed them into a leveling force for the kingdom. The Acts of the Apostles tells us that after the tongues of fire had rested on them, they began to speak the languages that people from all over the world would understand. So Pentecost reverses the situation at the Tower of Babel, where people were divided precisely on account of their differences. The church, as a community of disciples, is given the task of bridging the gaps, of bringing down the barriers that separate people. We are called to embody the spirit who transcends all boundaries and divisions. The early church was poor, few in numbers, marginalized by the dominant society, and persecuted by the power that be. Yet, without a doubt, it was a powerhouse, a powerhouse of prayer, a powerhouse of love, and a powerhouse of human solidarity. It was decisively a community that cared for the most vulnerable. It was a community of unity in diversity, radical equality, and inclusion, where all boundaries were transcended. They showed to the world that it was possible to live with fraternal concern, compassion, and communion, rather than with rivalry and competition. The church today must honor, must honor this founding memory by its radical outreach and witness. We too must seek fresh ways of transcending artificially constructed boundaries and embodying God's all-embracing love. Dear friends, we are living in a world that resembles the di division at Babel rather than the harmony at Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost. In a world which is increasingly hostile and intolerant towards differences, we need to be connected with the same spirit who transcends all divisions. Pentecost commits us to being messengers of peace and messengers of reconciliation. Pentecost challenges us to be a church that is a model for the wider society. We are called to be a community where the spirit of unity in diversity is evident, 
and we need to demonstrate in practical terms our common faith, common baptism, and common spirit that does bind us in the bond of love and friendship. At Pentecost, Mary and the disciples gathered and discerned their future in the light of Jesus' death, resurrection, and ascension. The Holy Spirit emboldened them and launched them forward as an agent, a leveling agent in the world. As we gather today and discern our life of faith, may we also be bolstered by the fresh energy that the Holy Spirit brings, that we also may be emboldened to go forward and to witness to the reign of God, becoming the sign of hope and reconciliation for the people of our time. Let us show the world, like the first Christian community did, that we can move from fear to perfect love through the power of the Holy Spirit. I invite you to stand as we renew our faith and together we recite the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. My brothers and sisters, since God endows us with the gift of his own life by imparting the Holy Spirit, let us come to him with prayers inspired by the same Holy Spirit. Let us come to him alive and free in the divine presence. For the church, that we may faithfully confess Jesus as Lord and be filled with the gifts of the Holy Spirit, to continue the mission of Christ in our time. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, that he may continue to be guided by the Spirit to lead the Church towards its final end, eternal beatitude. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Spirit of unity, that God will destroy all divisions that separate the human family and restore our ability to work together against disease, famine, and injustice. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For the spirit of love, that we may fulfill Christ's command to love one another. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer for a spirit of hope that all who are overwhelmed by life might find new reasons to live this day and be gifted with a vision of all that could be tomorrow. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For the spirit of healing that God will touch all who are ill particularly those with COVID-19. Strengthen their minds, their bodies, their spirits, 
and restore, restore them to wholeness. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For the spirit of life. That God will be merciful and give eternal life to all who have died or who are approaching death. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. And we continue to pray for an end to the pandemic through the intercession of Mary, through the prayer that Pope Francis himself composed. O Mary, you always shine on our path as a sign of salvation and hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain, keeping your faith firm. You, salvation of your people, know what we need, and we are sure you will provide so that as in Cana of Galilee, we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father and to do as we are told by Jesus, who has taken upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows to lead, to lead us through the cross, through the cross to, the to the joy of, of the resurrection. resurrection. Amen. Amen. Under your protection, we seek refuge, O Holy Mother of God. Do not disdain the entreaties of we who are in trial, but deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Our Lady of Lords, patroness of the sick, pray for us. O powerful and loving God, receive these humble prayers from a people made one by the Holy Spirit, who always dwells within us, through Christ our Lord.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truths. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for bringing your Paschal mystery to completion. You bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the Church came to birth, opened to all people the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, Overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic horse sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servants, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all who gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of Pentecost, on which the Holy Spirit appears to the apostles in tongues of fire and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul and Andrew, and all your, the saints, 
we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of us, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. celebrate a memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as ones who were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant table, the just. Sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, the holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and now rest in a sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, though sinners, we hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom 
you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the face of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Jesus, who today brought the Paschal mysteries to fulfillment. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. O God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, save God, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force, and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The most reverend Father Vincent, by the grace of God and the Apostolic See, Bishop of this Holy Church of Parramatta, will give the apostolical blessing with a plenary indulgence in the name of the Roman Pontiff to all present who are truly penitent and have confessed their sins and received Holy Communion. Pray to God for our Mother, Most Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop Vincent, and for Holy Mother Church, and strive by holiness of life to walk in full communion with it. Before I do so, I'd like to thank um, the Cathedral Choir who has uh, enhanced our liturgy with their music and singing and the different ministers of the altar here and uh, an apology to the people who braved the uh, cold wind out there. Hopefully from um, to tomorrow onwards with the easing of the restrictions, we can accommodate um, some more. But let us uh, above all pray for an end to the pandemic. Uh, let us pray for um, the safety, the well-being of all physical and spiritual. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, the Father of lights, who was pleased to enlighten the disciples' minds by the outpouring of the Spirit, the Paraclete, grant you gladness by his blessing and make you always abound with the gifts of the same Spirit. Amen. May the wondrous flame that appeared about the disciples powerfully cleanse your hearts from every evil and pervade them with its purifying light. Amen. And may God, who has been pleased to unite many tongues in the profession of one faith, give you perseverance in that same faith, and by believing, you may journey from hope to clear vision. Amen. And through the intercession of the blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, alleluia, alleluia. Thank you, everyone.